We pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for 
prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. Yet love is way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? Pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not. What if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? And what if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? Thou hast 
hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning new mercies I see. Please stand. Please be seated. (laughs) 
Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this memorial service for Richard Thorarison. And I'd like to welcome each and every one of you, family and friends, and church choir, Gladys Church Choir as well, and those of you watching online as well, um, I'd like to welcome you. And it surely shows how much Richard was loved and how much he's going to be missed. And we are so thankful you came to support the family today. At this time, I'd like to open today's program with the word of prayer and invite you to bow your heads with me. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for your goodness, your care for us, and for your love. Lord, we come with sad and broken hearts today because of the passing of Richard. But Lord, we know we can come to you for comfort, for strength, and for renewed hope. So I pray, Lord, that you will come here today in our midst through your spirit, and may you strengthen the family. May you give them, Lord, the hope that lies in the resurrection so that we may look forward to see him again when Christ returns. And Lord, we pray that you will bless also Pastor Gena and those that will come up here to speak. And may we all receive words of comfort and words to be strengthened. We pray these things and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. this time I would like to invite the Gladys Choir to come up and uh, sing their song and afterwards Doug is going to come and do the eulogy. Thank you for being here. is empty, no more traffic in the streets, all the buildings tools are silent, no more time to harvest meat, busy housewives is their labor, in the courtroom no debate, work on earth are all in silence, as the king comes through the gate, Line of holies, those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes that he has mended, those from prison he has freed, little children and the aged, hand in hand stand all aglow, all the crippled, broken, ruined, now clad in garments white as snow.
Thank you for that amazing song, amen. So this time I'm going to invite one of the brothers, Doug, to come up and do the eulogy. He comes to us from Riverton, Manitoba. So welcome, Doug, and uh, please come up and share uh, the story of your brother, Richard. Richard Oliver Thornson was born on July 14, 1949 in Riverton, Manitoba to Lars and Marion Thornson, the fourth among six brothers. Lars, the, the fourth among six brothers, Lars, Eugene, Vern, John, and Douglas, Richard began his education at Riverton Elementary. In 1962, the Thornson family relocated from Riverton to Calgary, Alberta, Richard continued his studies at Henry Wisewood High School. Even as a young man, he eagerly contributed to the family business. Upon high school graduation, Richard fully immersed himself in the operations of River to Construction Limited, where he skillfully assumed roles as both an estimator and a heavy equipment operator. In the mid-1970s, Richard began experiencing unique health symptoms, later identified as primary progressive multiple sclerosis. Despite this diagnosis, he never lost his zest for life. A lover of words, Richard was a dedicated diarist and writer. He had an affectionate budgie bird named Budgie and a penchant for all things blue. His interests were vast and varied, encompassing music, planes, Bible stories, geography, travel, equipment, and gardening. A fan of natural wonders, he was invigorated by rain, thunderstorms, and the refreshing experience of swim swimming in lakes. Conversely, while warm weather tended to deplete his energy, Richard never lost his resilient spirit. Known for his amiable nature, Richard was a friend to all and showed kindness and generosity whenever possible. In all his experiences, he remained a pillar of positivity and never harbored ill feelings towards others. His enduring wisdom was simple yet profound. We don't need more in life, just live simply. Richard drew strength and inspiration from his unwavering faith in God, a longtime mentor, member of the Calgary Central Seventh-day Adventist Church. He awaited the second coming of Christ with hope and devotion. An extraordinary network of caregivers greatly enriched Richard's life over the years. Foremost among them was Australia Bernardo, who provided exemplary care for nearly 25 years. Throughout these periods, Richard's devoted brother, Douglas Thornson, was a consistent source of loving care and com companionship. In the better part of the last decade, Dominic, Joanna, and Josen and baby Zyla have been integral in the caregiving team. Their extraordinary compassion and tenderness bring an immense comfort to Richard and his entire family. Richard's peaceful passing occurred near sunset October 20th, 2023, at the Rocky View Hospital in Calgary, Alberta. The family extends their heartfelt gratitude to the dedicated medical team that provided Richard with comfort until his final moments. Richard was predeceased by his father, Lars Thornson, and mother, Marion Thornson. He will be dearly remembered by his brothers, Lars, Eugene, Vern, John and Debbie, and Douglas Thornson, as well as his niece, Nina Thornson, and nephew, Joel Thornson. Memorial donations may be directed to the MS Society and the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, ADRA. Now I'm gonna read a poem from, that our cousin wrote. This poem was written by our first cousin, Sonia Kornick of Riverton, Manitoba. She asked me to say to Richard, he was her hero before he passed. In memory of Richard Thornson. Richard, we hold you in our hearts until we meet again. Life goes on without you, but it can never be the same. Don't cry because life is over. Smile because it happened. Remember. Remembering you is easy. We do it every day. Missing you is a heartache that will never go away. You are free. You have joined your savior. You no longer feel the pain. You have Slip the bonds of earth, you dance the skies on silvered wings. You join the splendor of sun-split clouds. 
You mounted the windswept heights with easy grace. You wheeled and soared high in the sunlit silence. You chased the wind. We will miss you so. Death leaves a, a heartache no one can heal. Love leaves a memory no one can steal. At this time, we're going to have, I know there's many people I want to share. Uh, we'll have two microphones that we will have, and you can raise your hand. And if you want to share anything, a memory about Richard, uh, some stories. I know the brothers probably can share a lot, but uh, uh, just raise your hand, and I'll be on this side, and Pastor Levy on that side. And uh, Debbie would like to start. Go ahead. The last time I saw Richard was... Thanksgiving dinner, we all went over to his house, and as people often do, we went around and asked everyone to say something they were thankful for. Richard's life was really, really hard. And he said he, said he was so thankful for life. And that's just the kind of guy he was. Anyone else? All right. I got to know uh, the Thornson family when they moved into Mindapore uh, in the very early 60s and invaded our nice little town. Uh, we got to know them when they started parking that funny looking yellow stuff uh, across the road from us and then uh, later on came out and tried to play baseball and football with us. They weren't very good at that, but uh, Richard was probably one of the better ones at, uh, at the baseball and stuff. I know Johnny likes to brag, but uh, anyhow. Uh, through the years, we got to know the Thornson family uh, very well, and later on, I wound up uh, running a lot of that ugly-looking yellow stuff that uh, sat out in the field by their place, along with Richard. And him and I did a, a few jobs over the years. And uh, about the mid-70s, a little after the mid-70s, uh, Richard was doing a, uh, a big job doing 16th Avenue from Barlow to 68th. And I was doing a, a job just down the road in Temple. And every Friday, I'd have to, uh, to go to Richard's job, and he'd show me what he wanted done the next day because he didn't work on Saturdays. And John and I and Richard, we'd be walking along, and he'd, he'd trip over, over or something, and, and uh, John and I'd look, and you couldn't see anything, and, and we'd call him clumsy. And then he'd go to get into his truck, and he'd hit his head on the top of the door, and we'd laugh at him again and call him clumsy. And uh, we believe that was actually the first signs of things to come. And uh, unfortunately, it was. And as the, the years progressed... Uh, well, Richard, he came to our place to introduce his girlfriend to us uh, late in that year. And uh, we had a real good visit and everything. And then about a month later, we got an invitation uh, to a wedding, which was a little bit of a surprise. And uh, so we were real happy in that. And then uh, it wasn't too long after that that Richard showed up at our door again for a visit by himself to tell us that he found out he had MS and he'd canceled the wedding. And from that moment on, things started to turn. And uh, as the years went by, things uh, got worse and worse. And uh, when we were living in Midnapore, uh Richard showed up at our door uh, this one time and he phones me up and he says, what are you doing, Rick? And I said, well, not much. What are you doing? He says, I'm in your driveway. Come and get me. And... Uh, he set out in his truck and he had hand controls on his vehicle and uh, he used a walker at that time. So anyhow, I'll go out and help him in and we had a good visit and things like that just happened and, and uh, over the years, uh, yeah, we'd just seen each other and, and had good talks. He always had a good sense of humor. Uh, it was pretty easy to get a good laugh out of old Richard and uh, yeah, I'll miss him and he was a good friend, okay? All right. 
I met Richard in uh, 79, I believe it was. I used to run string line for him. When he was running a grader, we were trying to bring 52nd Street to grade. And yeah, like Rick says, he seemed to be a little bit awkward in his walking and movements. I didn't think much of it. But uh, there's something here that I wanted to underscore. It says here, Richard is a lover of words. I think it was uh, 81. Yeah, I think it was 81. We were working on 52nd Street, and it was, I can't remember if it was coffee time or lunch time, but we were all standing around, you know, a bunch of guys standing around having coffee, lunch, and talking and that. There was a very, 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 very big man that worked for us. He was huge. And he was a happy, jovial person. And just playing around, he picked up Richard and threw him across the, the hood of his truck. Richard wasn't very happy. And when Richard was a lover of words, Richard only came up to my eyes, but he was much bigger than me, much. He dressed that man down in the most polite way, no bad words, not, nothing derogatory. He put that man in his place. This man was uh, seven, or I mean six foot seven, 350 plus pounds. I mean a big man. And Richard... Richard put him in his place with his words. He was a big man, and I never, ever forgot that. Anyone else? All right, I'll bring the mic up. Uh, we lived across the uh, road from the Thornsons. My name's Rob Butts. And uh, we had a lot of fun playing football when they moved in because there were six boys on our side of the road and six on their side. Lars was the only one that didn't join in, I think. Anyways, so we had a lot of fun. That was a big memory in our lives. And, uh, uh, but things changed. You know, when we got a little bit older, I, I started uh, believing in Jesus and uh, uh, Richard, uh, and I was a, became a plumber, so I'd go to Richard's house uh, when he was in bed and, uh, and visit him while I was doing the plumbing there every now and then. And uh, so our relationship changed from talking about football to, to uh, talking about Jesus. And uh, so Richard, uh, he set a, uh, the best example a man could set, you know, for uh, strength. Strength, strength, strength in the Lord, you know. He, uh, uh, I never knew him to say a bitter word about anybody. And... Uh, he was faithful right till the end. Uh, hello. Hi. Uh, my name is Dominic. I'm a Richard's caregiver for eight years. I started with him 2015. It was uh, it was spring of 2015, and on my first day, I saw him, and he said I was trying to uh, take care of him, and he said, "It's okay, uh, just relax, just be yourself," and I just wonder how good is this man, and and uh, as as time goes by, I just I uh, I just starting to know him and. Uh, I start to, I'm sorry, I, I write it, but uh, I just realized how good he was. He was a very good friend, a good family, and he was a good mentor. Uh, there is much more in the name of Richard. He was a, a beacon of hope, uh, a pillar of strength. Above all, he was a, a good friend, a very good friend. And uh, his loss was 
created a void in our heart that can't be filled. But his legacy lives on in, in the memories we shared and the lessons we learned from him. He uh, taught me a lot of things in life, uh, good things, and uh, he's the one who actually encouraged me to join Seventh-day Adventist Church. Even in his condition, he, he, was, he became an instrument of God to, to, uh, to enlighten someone. And uh, Richard, Richard had a remar remarkable life filled with extraordinary moments and simple joys. He, yeah, his sense of humor was never gone. And it's, it's not hard to make him laugh. And, and uh, to sum it up, I just love him so much just so, so much that when he passed away, it, it hits me so hard. Thank you. We'll take one or two more if, all right, right here. I'd be remiss if I didn't say something special about Richard. I have known Richard for probably 35 years. And I met Richard when I was looking for a job. And uh, they had an office up by, I don't know, you can never? Greenview. Greenview. Greenview is where it was. And when I went there, first of all, I drove up and I saw the place. And <laughs> I saw the place and I said, oh, I don't know if I even want to go into this place. It looks pretty awful. <laughs> but anyway, I made this turn around and I drove away first, and then I came back, and I said, no, I need to go. I need a job, and, you know, you never know what's going to happen. So anyway, I went in, and, of course, Richard was hiring for Riverton Construction for somebody to work in the office. Anyway, I met him, and we had a great visit and conversation, and then I went home and uh, not wasn't home very long until I got a call and asked if I would... I would come and uh, work for Riverton Construction. Well, I have been there, and I'm still there. One day, one day a month now, but I'm still with Riverton. What a wonderful family all of the Thornsons are. And Richard has really been a really sweet person. We had barely, um, shortly after, I think it was in May, the next year that I went I started with them in December, mid-December, and in May they moved to a beautiful new office, and um, Richard wasn't with us very much longer. He was not able to come to work as often, and it became less and less. But every time I would see Richard, he was always happy, and he, he loved, of course, when I came to see him, and. He was such a joy to be around. He never complained at all about his illness. He was always happy and smiling and joking around. And I just love him, and I really, really will miss him. And I'm grateful for to have known him. I hope to meet him again. All right, thank you everyone for sharing. At this time, we're gonna have a video tribute on the screen. Thank you.
Thank you, Dominique, Johanna, for putting together those videos. That's great. It was such a blessing to see those. I'm going to read a poem that um, the, um, <laughs> Richard's nephew, um, my brother Joel Thornson, wrote. Um, a few days after Richard's passing. And this are, these are his words. The poem is called Journey of Unbroken Spirit. In a world where shadows often cast, a man walked with memories vast. Through verdant fields and stormy nights, he journeyed with hopes held high. For in his heart, the bluebird sings a melody of unbroken wings. Though illness did make him stumble and fall, his spirit soared above it all. Legs taken, body confined, yet his heart the world couldn't bind. Breath grew short. Words ceased to flow, but the song of the hope continued to grow. What is this man, he'd often muse, when life's trials did him bruise? Is he but flesh, blood, and bone, or something more profound and unknown? For in his journey, one truth shone clear. In his heart, there was no fear. Nothing was taken. He remained the same. His essence untouched, an eternal flame. He knew the face of his looming fate. Yet he walked on without hate. Not seeking salvation from the demon near, but confidence that his soul was clear. To the living he left the creed, this creed, to know oneself is the truest deed. For in that knowledge fear does part, and hope's bluebird finds its heart. So let us heed his wise refrain, to find ourselves amidst life's pain. And each morn, as dawn does long, will we'll be greeted by the bluebird song. <clears throat> There's a land that is fairer than day. And 
by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed. And our spirits shall sorrow no more, not a sigh for the blessings of rest. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore to our bountiful Father above. We shall offer a tribute of praise for the glorious gift of His love and the blessings that hallow our days. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. My name is Pastor Gena, and uh, I'm one of the pastors here at Calgary Central. I, I got to know the Therarison family way back when I was still a youth pastor here at Central. Uh, that was way back in 2004 and 2005. And uh, I, I went and saw Richard, and I remember him. I saw him at that time, and the family got to know them. But now I'm uh, learning from, from John that uh, John and Richard actually used to teach my wife in the primary division here in this church. And <laughs> so uh, I don't want to say how old she is because I'm going to get into trouble. But uh, uh, that is awesome to know that. Uh, my wife Beatrice grew up in this church. Uh, she was about four years old when she came here. And John told me this. I was like, wow, that was awesome. So Richard used to get involved in the church here, in the life of the church. And, uh, and thank you, Dominic, for those, uh, that presentation. It was amazing to see his life and actually get to know him better in a few minutes of those, uh, of those pictures, but you get to know Richard better. So thank you, everyone, for, for being here and coming here today because... Uh, I know the family really appreciates that, um, that you came to share these memories. Um, and I learned, I learned a lot from listening to you today. I really did. I really did. So we're here today to find comfort in the presence of God and uh, in the truth of the Scripture, and, and especially to surround the Rarison family with love and care and our prayers. They need that at this time. Uh, there is an author, his name is Tony Cook, and he says this, if we could summarize the purpose of an occasion like this, we could do it in three simple words. The hurt, the help, the hope. Hurt, help, 
hope. And I'm going to talk about these three words today. So we're talking about the hurt. No matter how eloquent the words that I'm speaking today were, the words of the friends and the encouragement and the beautiful service that we're having here today, no matter how kind friends are in their expressions of care and concern to the family, there is still a very genuine and valid sense of sorrow and loss that is experienced when a loved one is no longer with us. No matter what we say today, there is still that experience that the family is going through. And they're hurting today. And we are hurting with you. And Jesus is saying that he's hurting with you today. When he was at his friend Lazarus' funeral, Jesus wept. He cried. He was hurting with the family. And he's hurting with you today. Even when a person has faith, and I know that this family does have faith in God, and, and Richard had a, a great faith in God. Even when we all have faith in God, there's still a sadness that exists because someone we love is no longer with us. We are no longer able to enjoy their company, uh, their friendship, their fellowship, their love, you know, and, and all those fun moments and memories that we have to, uh, together. We are no longer able to do that and experience that fellowship. But God is right there with us to comfort us when we go through those times of mourning. Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 4, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. There is comfort for you today in the presence of God. Jesus himself faced great heartache, when his own cousin, John the Baptist, was taken in the prime of his life. When Jesus heard of John's death, this is what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 14 and verse 13. When Jesus heard that had, what had happened, he withdrew by a boat privately to a solitary place. He needed some time alone. He needed some time to grieve. He needed some time to mourn. I believe that Jesus was deeply saddened by this news and he desired some solitude in, in which I'm sure he was drawing comfort from his heavenly Father. We need that solitude as well when we are going through that hard time. We need to spend time with God and draw comfort from him during these times. Many times people will hear of someone losing their loved ones and they get the impression that God's direction to anyone who is grieving is just to snap out of it and quit grieving, just get over this, you know. Uh, but just like uh, there is a healing and recovery process that, in, that, is involved, it, that involves time when our body is wounded and, or injured, so there is a period of time when we suffer loss. We need time to, to get healing. This is why the writer of Ecclesiastes says this, To everything there is a season, and the time to every person, uh, to every purpose under the heaven. A time to weep, and a time to mourn. A time to laugh, and be happy. So there is a time to weep and mourn, and we need that time as a family and friends uh, to, to, to get through this time when we get that healing from the hurts that have been inflicted to us because we lost Richard. The family and friends of Richard Therarison are hurt by the loss, and only time will heal those hurts and those wounds. And you know what? It is different for everyone. I was recently told by someone that those wounds don't heal, but people just learn to live with them. And that might be true. So there is, a, there is a hurt that we are all experiencing today. But the, this, this person says there is help. There is help. Even though the family and friends are hurting today, the good news is that there is help. Psalm 46, 1 and 2 and then verse 7, it tells us, God is our refuge and our strength. Amen? A very present help in trouble. He is present right there to help us. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed, 
And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge and help. God is committed to helping us through the difficult and turbulent times we go through. I know that the family of Richard know that they have a God that is willing and ready to help them. But I also wanted to remember that God, God also helps us through friends who are supportive, who are there for you. And the friends and the church family is there for you to help you through this time. He helps us through friends who don't put unrealistic standards in front of us, who allow us uh, the time, the time to, uh, to be human. In 2 Timothy 1, verse 16 and 18, Apostle Paul was relating a time in prison when he experienced a sense of abandonment and loneliness. He then referred to a friend named Anisiphorus, uh, who had sought Paul out, found him, and refreshed him. This friend put effort and time into finding Paul and ministered to his needs when he needed that help. Family of Richard, I want you to remember that you have friends and you have your church family. You have an extended family and we are here to minister to your needs during this time of sorrow and grief. I read this illustration. A little girl was, she was sent to the store on an errand by her mother with specific instruction. The mother said, go straight to the store and return straight home. We as, as kids heard that many times from our parents, and we never followed those instructions, I know. The girl did not, did not arrive home at the expected time, and the mother became anxious and, and concerned. And when the girl finally returned home, her mother was quite agitated, and, and the frustration of the mother came out when she questioned where the girl had been, why she, it had taken her so long to get home. And the girl responded that on the way to the store, she stopped to help a friend whose doll had just been broken. The mother was somewhat sarcastic when she asked what she knew about fixing dolls, like you know anything about fixing dolls. The little girl said, I don't know anything about fixing dolls. I just sat down with her for a while and helped her cry. That's all she did. Help can come in many different ways. And sometimes we just need to help others cry. So there is a hurt, but there is help. And there is hope. God does understand our hurt. He's touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And God does help us in the midst of our humanness and our uh, natural emotion, God helps us with his presence and through friends. But God goes beyond these first two elements and gives us hope. When the world says it's all over, it is finished, God says, I will have the last word. It is not over. It is not finished. So when the world says today it's over for Richard, God responds and says, no, it's not. There is more to come. As Christians, we have something very positive and tangible to look forward to in the future, don't we? 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 and 14 says this, and this is the hope that God offers today to the family and friends. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, says Apostle Paul, that you sorrow not, even as others with, which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus, will God bring with him. Amen? We have the hope of resurrection. We have the hope that burns within our hearts, hope of the coming of the Lord. When Christ shall come and he will resurrect Richard and all those who died in the Lord. And this is the hope that Richard died with and this is the hope that the fa family and friends hold on to today. Yes, we live on this earth where we have to face the reality of death. 
Losing Richard hurts a lot. But God offers you his help today and his promise that you will see Richard again. Hold on to this hope until you see him once again on that beautiful resurrection morning. May God bless you. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite the Gladys Choir to come and sing one more song for us. And then after prayer, they will have a benediction for us. Thank you. Joy. 
Just before I pray, I'd like to announce that um, the family would like to invite everyone to join them in the auditorium for some refreshments and some fellowship. And also, if you didn't have a chance to sign the guest book, it will be there in the auditorium, so please sign the guest book. Thank you once again for being here, and now we're going to close our service with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're here today um, to say goodbye to Richard, but we're not saying goodbye forever. We, see, we, we say goodbye until we see him again. We know that Richard had a, a great faith in you, Lord, um, and the family has the same faith in you, Lord. And we know that that glorious day is coming, Lord, and we can't wait for that glorious day when Richard will come out of the grave and it's not a, going to be confounded anymore to a wheelchair, but he's going to leap and run to embrace his loved ones, his family, and embrace you, Lord Jesus, and say thank you, Lord, for your salvation. Lord, we are looking forward with anticipation towards that day, and I know the family of Richard and friends are looking forward towards that day as well. But while we're still here on earth, we are hurting, Lord. The family is hurting, so I pray that you surround the family at this time with your love and your care, Lord. Take them up in your hands, Lord, at this time and comfort them. Bring hope and assurance to their life. I pray that you'll be there for them and walk with them, Lord, and cry with them. Lord, I pray that you bless the family as they're going forward, bless the friends. And we once again want to thank you for Richard's life and his influence in the lives of many other people. He was a great influence, and one of the fruit of his influence is here today, Dominic. We thank you that he was a witness to you until his last days. Mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for that. And once again, thank you for his life. And may we remember his life, the way he lived, and may we live the same in our lives with hope and anticipation of the glorious day. Thank you, Lord. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.